Hey, welcome back to New Zero Land. Uh, I left off the last episode of this car conversion series by making a huge mess in my garage. And as you can see, it's still a huge mess. I haven't done anything since then. Uh, the motor is still in the bike. So in this episode, I'm going to do stuff about all of that. All right, let's go. So my goal is to eventually get everything plugged back in outside of the frame so I can keep the battery charged up while I prepare all the other stuff because there's still a lot of stuff to do and it's going to take a while. I've barely even started this project, but so far taking everything apart has been a lot of fun. The real test is going to be seeing if I can get it all back together and running again and if I made enough labels. But first, I need to get the motor out. So this front sprocket guard is actually wind form that like proprietary 3D printing stuff from CRP. Super cool. I feel like this is wind form too on the motor. Really cool technology going on in this bike. Oh yeah, so while I'm here, the what I, what I talked about in the last video with the brake lever switch thing to initiate like the start thing where you hold the brake and then press the start button to like a safety thing. Um, these are also to turn on the brake light. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't even think about that. So yeah, let's check out the beat and see if it has a similar setup. I'm assuming it does. Okay, let's see if I can get down in here. Okay, break. Um, break goes to this guy. And that looks like it has, oh, ouch, looks like only two wires. Yeah, it could work out perfectly. Holy crap, look at all those fuses. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a fun project. Another mystery was what to do with the kickstand and this, like, kill switch thing. Well... That's where the handbrake comes in. So when you turn on the car, there's this little guy right there. It's a light that tells you that your handbrake is on. So if you put the handbrake off, so like that, the light goes off. On, off, on, off. So that I could just hook up to the kickstand switch somehow. So when the kickstand is rotated like down on the bike, then this would be rotated up in the car so that the light would be on. And that's actually a legal requirement to have the light on. Uh, so I'll just, I'll move the light somewhere else on the dash or something just to, yeah. So that's awesome. Thanks to all the people that had that idea in my comments. You guys are geniuses. All right, next step, move all the bike parts somewhere else. It's hard to even walk around in here. My garage is starting to look like an electric motorcycle graveyard. Can't forget that mystery ground strap. I had to make room for the trusty ladder to hang the motor from. No, I didn't learn my lesson in the last video. All right, so two bolts on the front holding it in to the frame, and then there's one bolt to the frame and then another bolt that probably goes all the way through the swing arm, through the bottom of the motor, I think. Yeah, probably. So two on the back, two on the front. Should be easy, but I just need to find a way to suspend it from the ladder. Yeah, I think I have a solution to this. Just put the battery bolts back in. And use those to hook the tie downs to. Yeah? Maybe? I feel like this will work. Fun fact, in New Zealand, these are called straps. But in this situation where the tie downs aren't actually tying down anything, I'm gonna call them lift ups or swingy straps. All right, well, good to know. This is the bolt side and the other side is the nut side. So I have to get the like breaker bar into there. So I need to just move everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's the 
nut number one, nut number two, and this whole spacer moves. I didn't realize it was a spacer, but yeah, it's just to align the motor correctly. So this whole bolt should be a little, well, okay. It'll be loose in a bit. Maybe I'll have to, yeah, I have to lift this up a bit actually. Just to take some, some pressure off of it. Okay, work my way through all the nuts. Always take care of the nuts first. <laughs> all right, nut number three. Just one more. That is a bigger one which I will find out soon. Oh, yeah, it goes all the way through, cool. Mm, interesting. Once again, I didn't have the right tool for the job, so that meant another trip to the hardware store. Okay, I bought all the socket sizes that I didn't have, so let's see which one it is. <laughs> 24 millimeter, right in the middle. What? 25 on this side? Okay, so here's the deal, right? I have a 24. The 24 fits on the other side, the bolt side. This is the nut side, and it doesn't it doesn't fit on the nut. I don't know. Like it doesn't it just doesn't get on it. Like I'm assuming the nut's bigger. So the problem is my only 25 is too thick, so it won't even fit inside the frame to get around the nut. So I'm thinking about just jamming a fat screwdriver in there and twisting from the bolt side and the screwdriver just holds the nut. I don't know, maybe? Something like, just, just wedge this in there. Oh, there you go. It's working. It's working. Obviously, you know, just <laughs> if you're gonna do this, find the right size socket, but the only socket they had available in that size was just too big, so I'm just cheating. So this is a torque wrench, not meant for undoing bolts. It's only meant for tightening. But you know what? <laughs> I don't care. Sweet. Nut number four. I just realized that before taking the motor off, I should probably take the wheel off so I get the the chain loose off the front sprocket so everything's just free to come out. Yeah, I'll do that. As you can see, there's the, the drain plug right here. Um, so I didn't want to put something right under that. This is really just like barely lifting it up just to give it a little bit of support um, so that it's not just the tie downs that are holding it up. Um, Cause man, yeah, this is crazy heavy. I had no idea. Uh, it's a little concerning, but it's all good. So yeah, then once I can get that swing arm bolt out, I'll lower the tie downs and the jack at the same time. I'll, I'll get Jen's help for that. Next, it made sense to loosen the rear shock just to separate the frame from the swing arm. But I feel like I should mention the importance of the order to which you disassemble something and that I had no idea which part to take off first. I'm sure there's an official way of doing this, but I wasn't doing it. Okay, it's totally loose. This seemed like a good time to ask Jen for help again. And I'm glad I did because she noticed I hadn't unbolted the brake lines from the swing arm. The umbilical cord of the bike. I'll just stand here and hold it. Okay. Now that the frame's out of the way, you can tackle the motor and the swing arm. This is totally out of order. 
And I'm just gonna pull this like so. Well, that was easy. But I wonder if if you're strong enough and I'm strong enough to. Yeah, we are. Maybe. Surely, why not? Are we lifting it? Yeah, we are. Okay. Well, gee, Mister, you're really strong. Do you think any of your viewers know that reference? Probably not. What's it from? Hercules. Oh yeah, Hercules. Jeepers, Mister, you're really strong. Right. Safety sandals, guys. Just wear safety sandals. Safety sandals. Are we right. lifting it up? No. Are you kicking the jack out? Yeah, I'm gonna keep the jack out. Are you lifting it? Yep. One, two, three. Good. Slide this. Wow. That wasn't heavy. Awesome. I told Jen that the motor was really, really heavy, but she, she's like, no problem at all. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna weigh it. Huh. I'm weak. So, 50, 54 ish kilos. It's a small child. Now we're gonna weigh all this other stuff, but I'll let Jen go and drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before I forget. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of this stuff. Actually, all of this stuff is going into the car, so I'm gonna weigh all of it. Um, the battery I'm not gonna weigh. I checked online and it is this heavy. So uh, I'll just add that into the final amount. All right, 5.1 for the charger. Controller, radiator, all that stuff. That's, let's say nine kilos, oops. Yeah, about nine kilos. All right, moving down to the smaller scale, just because it's gonna be uh, more sensitive, tinier things. And I'm gonna put them all in a Death Star bowl. Yeah, let's shove the whole harness in this bowl as much as we can. 2.3 kilos. The VCU, 661 grams. The, I don't know how much of this I'm going to use, but the mode stuff, uh, starter thing, and the, let's just say I'm going to use the throttle in the car. That's 470 grams. Definitely using the CCS charging port. Let's just say uh, one kilo. The Energica Dash. 76 grams. And last but not least, Pablo the fan. About 400 grams. All right, everything you see in the frame is going into the car. So battery, charger, controller, motor, and all the extra stuff, these are their weights. So all combined. This is how much weight I'm putting into the car. And so this is how much weight I have to take out of the car. Plus the 50 kilos I have to lose just to make it legal. This is gonna be difficult. So the next episode, since this video is already way too long, I'm gonna 3D scan all of these parts and kind of Tetris them around in the computer to see if they'll even fit in the beat. Uh, hopefully they do. Otherwise, we've got problems. All right, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.